WMS and its geisha interface were used to predict pond levels in ponds adjacent to a stream restoration site on the Hubble Creek in Springville, Utah. The purpose of this study was to assist in predicting the recovery of an endangered fish called a June sucker. These ponds provide critical habitat for young June suckers. If the side ponds are connected to Hubble Creek during certain times of the year, young June suckers can get trapped in the ponds. When trapped, the June suckers are protected from predators until the water rises again. These non-native predators are located in Utah Lake, located downstream of Hubble Creek. This protection gives young June suckers a chance to grow so they can better compete with the Utah Lake predators. The hydrograph developed in the part one video will be used as an inflow boundary condition for the geisha model. We'll start by loading in a tin created from survey points of the restoration area. We will then convert it to a DEM and convert the vertical units of the data to meters. We will load in a background image, land use and soil type data. We predict the location of the stream Tauwex in the restoration site by computing the flow accumulation data using Topaz. We create an outlet and use a DEM to create stream arcs. To create a boundary for our model, we use the tin boundary as a guide. The hydrologic wizard will be used to set up our geisha model. We will then create a 2D grid with 3 meter cells. We'll use WMS to create the land use and soil type coverages from the land use and soil type shape files. Next, we create land use, soil type, and combination index maps from the coverages. The map tables will then be set up for the roughness, infiltration and initial moisture.
for the job control parameters, we will run the model for 3600 minutes with a 20 second time step. We will set the output to be written out every 15 minutes. To prevent instabilities when running Geisha, we will set up a minimum amount of precipitation. Next, we will create an arc boundary condition at the most upstream part of the stream. The boundary condition will have a variable flow rate and will paste the hydrograph data developed in the part 1 video into the flow time series. We'll define the downstream boundary arcs to be boundary conditions with a constant slope. Now we are ready to save our project and run Geisha. Now that the model has finished, we can scroll through the time steps in the solution to see how the depth changes over time. We'll modify the display settings and create a film loop of the events in Google Earth. Notice that the pond areas adjacent to the stream restoration site flood and are then cut off from the main stream. This will give the dune suckers a chance to gain strength before being released downstream into the lake and exposed to predators. Using the water depths predicted by Geisha, we could predict the habitability of the ponds and the long-term survival probabilities of young dune suckers. Other operations such as a long-term simulation groundwater interaction and infiltration could be added to the model to help it more accurately define what happens in the model area over the long term. Additionally, an overland flow boundary condition could be applied to the downstream end of the model to represent the fluctuation of the water depth in the lake throughout the year.